It must have taken a lot of bravery to go in and stab something the size of a mammoth time and time again. It's really interesting to see what those Neanderthals were eating and potentially hunting, and they would have had to have been very robust to deal with that. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, a, it's a lifestyle that required incredible strength. But there is something else when we look at these arm bones because they're different side to side. They're asymmetrical. Yeah, when you look at the arm bones, you can see really visually that the right is larger and more robust than the left. So the question is, what were Neanderthals doing differently with their right arms compared with their left arms? George, can you help me out? Well, there are a couple of things that we can try out that might offer some clues. Now, we've got a, a fine specimen of a hunter here. Now, Colin, you, he's wired up onto a machine. What, what are we hoping to, to show with this? Well, what we're trying to do is test a theory that explains that asymmetry they were talking about. You need intensity and you need frequency to cause bone change. The prevailing theory is that when you spear thrust, that back arm, the right arm, provides the majority of the force mm -hmm. and the front is simply steering, so, somewhat like a snooker. Pool okay. cue. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to measure the muscle activity during spear thrusting. The key is that the muscles attach onto the bone and change their shape. It's one of the things that, that influences the bone structure. Okay, so when, when our, our hunter here stabs prey, these electrodes here will, will be activated. Exactly. Well, the muscles will be activated. It will measure the energy that it produces. What we're going to get them to do is to do some spearing activities to measure the activity of the muscles that might give us clues as to how the bones are being influenced. Okay, so you, you have to be a really fierce hunter. Mm. We want some serious intensity because this thing is either your dinner or your death. So get in there nice <laughs> stance and we're going to get three hard stabs. So go ahead. <laughs> nice. And again and out. One more. One more time. About that. Excellent, excellent. Okay, perfect. You just have a seat over there. Ooh. Now what we see here, exactly, is that you'd expect from the theory that the right has more activity than the left. And what we're seeing is exactly the opposite. This is the right, this is the left. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's the so left it's is far more So it's completely the other active. way around. Yeah, and the reason for that, we think, is that it's not simply like playing pool. It's much more that you have a full body uh, flexing the hips shift, the shoulders shift, and your arms go right into the target. The ground reaction force comes back along the spear and the muscles of the left arm are taking the majority of the load. And as a result, they're far more active, which is the opposite way is what, for what you'd expect for explaining what you see on the skeleton over there. So how come the asymmetrical arm bones if the right arm is, is actually not doing as right. much work as the left? It's a wonderful question. Neanderthals live in a cold climate. They needed to stay warmer than just their physiology would allow for. So clothing might have been part of the equation. To produce a hide, to, to take something like this, a skin, and produce a hide that you can construct uh, clothing out of, takes a great deal of processing. In yeah, fact, it has to be scraped and exactly. cleaned and... and yeah. You're completely right. It takes approximately eight hours per hide of scraping. That's a great deal of, of scraping. So if you remember, you need intensity and you need frequency to cause bone change. How many hides would you need for one suit? Perfect question. You need five to six, and each individual needs a new suit per year. Right. That's a lot of scraping. Absolutely. John, you're going to be scraping now. Yeah. So what we want you to do is grab a, grab a stone tool. This is a side scraper. That These are the types of things that are found predominantly in Neanderthal stone tool assemblages. So go ahead and give it a, give it a scrape for us. Perfect. And if you keep doing that, I'm going to move over to here. He, he's Again, this is the away. right shoulder. Yeah. This is the activity from the right shoulder, the one that's active. If this type of activity is intense enough and frequent enough to cause bone adaptation, then this could explain what we see. And they would have been doing this for hours and hours and hours. The explanation is that if one person was doing it for their family, they could remain busy for half a year of scraping. It might explain the, the right side dominance and the massive asymmetry you see in Neanderthals. It's very clear. Alice, this might be the answer. It could be something as mundane as scraping hides all day. I really love this idea. I love the fact that we think of Neanderthals as big game hunters, and yet here we are looking at them and saying, well, actually, what's really shaped their bones is not hunting, but making clothes.